Hey guys, just wanted to show you something real quick. Um, this here is a Martin nesting box. I mean, most of you guys know that Martins, they, uh, they have their babies in hollow trees, hollowed out spots where the woodpeckers have cut a hole and gone down and they'll go into a rotten poplar tree. Um, that's the norm is a poplar tree. They don't do spruce and jack pine too much because, of, well, at all, I imagine, because of the obvious um, problem with, you know, pine and spruce sap getting in their fur and getting them stuck in there. But anyways, this here is a, a one and three eighths inch hole. Yeah, you know, actually one, one and a half inch hole. Um, female Martin will fit through this. Big, like male, adult male Martin won't fit through it. The reason for that. Now, adult male Martin will go into the nest and kill the, the babies if they get a chance. This will keep most big males out at one and a, a half or one and three eighths inches. And it varies a little bit, you know, from southern areas where the Martin are a little bit smaller to the northern ones where they're a little bit bigger. But the, and I use all scrap wood. I had some leftover one by eights or two by eights when I made the, from the floorboards on this cabin. So I've made them out of that, plywood on the sides, got a, the board sticks up here with a, a nail hole and a groove. So you slide it on the nail, pull it down, and the bottom board has two holes drilled through it to put the nail straight through. So then it's solid on there. A fisher can't come along, knock it off. Um, when you put it in the trees, and you'll see I've got some video of, uh, of them in the trees. When you see them in the trees, they're, they're high enough that a bear can't reach from the ground. Now you're never going to stop a bear from getting them, you know, if they want to climb up the tree and get in there, but you know, don't just make it as hard as you can. Um, and anyways, I put these up all around the trap line. I put out a, you know, half a dozen a year, usually. Um, you know, most of the people out here kind of laughed when I, you know, told them I did, so I just don't tell them anymore. But, uh, you know, I've got a really small trap line, smaller than any of the other ones around there. And, like I said, I got 48 Martin this year. And they, uh, you know, the other one guy that was had fur dropped off last night, when I dropped mine off, he had 12 Martin, another guy had two. Um, but anyways... I don't know, I'm not saying that made a difference, but if you give them a place, when we get an area that is so cut over and it's got so much regen in there, you know, Martin need mature bush, two reasons, the uh, nesting, they have to have a hollow spot in a tree to nest or they just will not be in there. You might see them coming through there in the fall, in the winter time, um, but they're just traveling, they're not in their nesting. If you got a whole bunch of areas where they can nest, you're going to have all the babies, not just the wanderers hanging out there. And that's only going to help you. Now, the other thing with Martin is, I mean, everybody knows you get a Martin in a trap, everything loves to eat a Martin. Now, I hit my Martin hard right off the bat of the season, and I get as many traps out as I can and take them. Most of my Martin are caught in the first month of the season you know, over the first six weeks for sure, because once that snow gets deep, then you're going to start losing a lot of Martin to natural predation. The, uh, everything out there eats them. Fox will eat them. Lynx eat them. Fishers, obviously. They, you know, everybody thinks Fisher is the number one killer of Martin, but I've, uh, got a differing opinion. Um, sure, they do take a lot, but I think the number one natural predator of, a uh, Martin are those great gray owls. We have a lot of them. Well, there's never a lot, so to speak, but they're fairly common up here in the wintertime. The great horned owls travel south. The great gray owls come from um, the north more down into this area. And we do have some nesting around here because I've seen them all summer long. I see them in the spring when I'm bear baiting um, and stuff. But you'll see them sitting up on old broken off trees and they are watching for anything um, mink, marten, 
That's why you don't see a lot of Martin tracks out in the middle of open areas. The, uh, I've noticed that my whole life that I've been trapping up north, you very rarely see a Martin cross any kind of an open area. I had a, a major power line that went through one of my trap lines. It went, you know, it was one of them, you know, I don't know, 80 yards wide or whatever. And I trapped both sides of that, and it was like having, as far as Martin were concerned, every other animal will cross it no problem. Um, as far as Martin were concerned, it was like having two separate trap lines. The they absolutely would not go out into that open area, and uh, you know you'd see them once in a while where they'd come out a few feet, and then bang back in the bush. But and and I 100% sure it's owls that are, are taking them. Um, you know, Martin, they don't like to get out of the mature forest either because anything on the ground, you know, fox, whatever, they need those trees to get up, to get out of their uh, reach. So, anyways, I put these things up, like I said, um, Martin will be nesting in the next couple months, you know, and uh, I like to get them up early enough to where they can get in, the females can get in and find their, you know, spots to nest. And you'll have birds and squirrels going in here too. Uh, you really don't got to worry about that because once a martin finds it, there won't be no more birds or squirrels there. Anyways, all right. So just wanted to show you that, and I'll show you some footage of them up in the tree. But like I said, make sure they're up as high as you can reach. I usually do it in the fall, and I'll back my quad right up to the tree, and then stand on the back rack of the quad. So the, the box is at least 10 feet up in the air. Um, if I'm going out just to do this, I'd bring a, a small ladder with me so that you've got, you know, six feet of ladder and then my height, so you're still minimum ten feet off the ground. Alrighty, that's just another trap line improvement tip. I know we've been. Hey guys, out in the line here. It's a beautiful morning. It's uh, 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Just a nice day. Um, just stop in here to set up one of the Martin nesting boxes. Just want to show you. See, this is the kind of bush here. You know, it's all mid-range. It was harvested yeah, probably 30, 40 years ago, whatever it was. But you got no real, except very odd poplar tree, which is big enough um, for the birds to put a hole in for Martins to nest in. And even if they are big ones, there's very, very few dead ones. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put this nesting box up in the tree. And uh, like I said, it's right between two of my trap sets. They're about, you know, I got this spot here. I think it's pretty close to three quarters of a mile between the two closest traps for Martin traps. So, you know, that gives you... A good distance between nesting areas so you know so the mature females might not get caught and they generally have about a half a mile range so you know maybe a little more food scarce but anyways it gives them an area here to in an air in an area where they normally wouldn't find a, a place to nest just gives them a good spot to to lay some have some babies so anyways we're gonna get this thing up and then move on down so here we go, we got this box up in the tree. Um, this is the second one I put in this week. I got, I think, four more at home to put in. And uh, like I said, get them a good 10 feet up off the ground so the bears can't reach them. And uh, hope for the best. And like I said before, don't worry about squirrels and birds. All that is is martin food when they find the uh, the nesting box. So, anyways, we're gonna move down the trail here. Oh, by the way, just saw on the trail a huge, huge bull moose. I mean, obviously lost his antlers already, but you can just tell it's a bull right away. He's a he was just a monster running right down my skidoo trail in front of me, but I couldn't get the camera out in time. Alrighty, see you later.